Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Plant Powered Metro's New York monthly series, Cooking with Chef Carol. My name is Wendy Sachs, and I'm a member of the board at Plant Powered Metro New York. And um, yeah, we love having this series every month and, um, and hope and they're thrilled you. Hope you love it as much as we do and thrilled you're here to join us. Um, Plant Powered Metro empowers people to achieve better health and overcome chronic disease through whole food, plant-based, through a whole food, plant-based approach to nutrition. We offer evidence-based education, resources, and support to create community and inspire change together with a wide network of grassroots leaders, organizers, and educators, we raise awareness about the dramatic health benefits of whole food plant-based nutrition, empower individuals to make their own lifestyle changes, as well as lead projects that spark change in food policy, practice, and food culture. It doesn't seem to matter how many times I read that, I still stumble over it, even though I'm actively engaged in it. In any case, welcome to the show. Um, to those of you who are watching the replay, um, welcome. It's February, so still kale and lettuces and garlic and potatoes and carrots and squashes seem to be abundant at the farmer's market these days. So as usual, we encourage you to support the local farmer's markets. We encourage you, if you can, to buy organic and even better to buy regeneratively organic fruits and vegetables if you can find them um, because it helps support the soil and soil growth. So guidelines, please let us know where you're from in the chat. It's always fun to know who's here. And also please ask questions in the chat. Carol and I usually allow time um, at the end of the demo. And if not, um, or sometimes we're able to interrupt and I'm able to interrupt and to ask her questions, but usually we allow some time at the end too. Um, and then if you're enjoying the presentation, please like us on Facebook or YouTube, and um, that always helps for the organization. So very quick announcement, and I'll have more for you at the end, but our most important announcement is that Plant Powered Metro is doing their signature jumpstart in March. In fact, we're starting right at the beginning of March, March 2nd till April 2nd. And I cannot recommend um, our jumpstart uh, more. Uh, for those of you who are looking to just transition from standard American diet into a whole food plant-based lifestyle, it's superb. And for those of you who just want a refresher or need a kind of immersive support, even if you've done this before and want to do it again, I highly recommend you come and join us. It's, a, it's an incredible four-week immersion, and then we'd like to follow up or keep up um, with all kinds of things all year round so that you're constantly in the, um, in, you know, uh, in the conversation of a whole food plant-based lifestyle. I was learning today from Chef AJ how important it is to have mirror neurons. And we tend to learn faster with our mirror neurons, particularly if we're addicted to processed food, getting off the processed food, it helps to be with a community of people who are already following a plant-based lifestyle. So we encourage you to be part of the community and we do encourage people, particularly at the beginning, but any step along the way to please join us for the jumpstart. It's, it's affordable and uh, well worth your time and attention. Also, February is Heart Healthy Month. So we have some um, incredible programs coming up. In fact, February next Thursday, February 23rd, it's an important day. We have Dr. Esselstyn um, speaking to us on a program that's sponsored with the JCC Manhattan from noon until 1.30. Um, that evening, we have our very own cooking show producer, Jim Spellos, who's going to be moderating a Heart to Healthy Heart series the night of February 23rd. We have a Spanish-speaking um, or a uh, introduction to plant-based lifestyle for Spanish speakers on February 23rd. And um, and then February 24th, we're doing a uh, we're joining Harlem Grown um, in honor of Black History Month. Um, Harlem Grown is a not for profit that also educates about the value of um, not only plant based lifestyle, but they actually have a garden and they help educate next generations um, um, on uh, citizens being able to grow their own food right here in New York City. 
And um, so we will be there. It's from 3 until 5.30, I believe. And then we have a um, live program also with um, some of the plant-based black chefs in the New York City area also uh, happening in Harlem. So please join us for those events. Um, all the details are on our website. And without further ado, Carol, hi. <laughs> Hey, Welcome. Wendy. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. You know, wherever you are. Um, what an action-packed schedule for Plant Powered Metro in the month of February. Incredible, Definitely. and also incredible that um, I was part of the Jumpstart program in 2019 myself. I never thought that I could do it. I needed the support. You were my support. <laughs> but I did the 21 day program and it was amazing. And it really did change my life because I thought, well, I've been a vegetarian for almost 25, maybe 25 years. And I thought if I could really give up that dairy, um, which Dr. Barnard had given that lecture, which always made me like say, oh, he, he set off the light bulb and then I did the 21 day program and I thought, you know, if I, if I don't like this 21 days, if I don't like it, I'll just go back to my old ways, you know, not so I'll just do it because just for three weeks. Right. right. And it was so amazing that I've never looked back. Right. So I have a funny little memory of there. And then I definitely want you to start cooking. But I remember we were walking in the park and I was saying, you know, Carol, it's no sugar, no salt, no oil. And you were like, Wendy, no right chef in their right mind, no chef with any dignity at all would avoid salt. It enhances flavor. It does this, it does that. And after the 21 days, you just looked at me and said, I'm game. I'm trying. I, I am game. It was true. And, and, you know, back in the 80s, when I lived in the Bay Area, I kind of followed Dr. Dean Ornish for a little while. And I did learn back in the 80s how to cook with no oil. So that seemed believable and doable to me. But the salt thing and then... I had been cooking with lots of different kinds of ancient grains and because I had kind of given up white flour like a long time prior to being a vegan because I knew it had no nutrients. But boy, oh boy, I've just never looked back. And desserts, desserts for me have never been the same. So today is about desserts. Um, you know, I planned February and I really wanted to be teaching uh, desserts for Valentine's Day. And we all realized it was Super Bowl Day right before the Valentine's Day. So we're here after Valentine's Day, but I'm here to say, isn't love every day, right? Isn't, and chocolate, a little bit of chocolate is actually quite good for you. <laughs> and so today we're gonna actually learn how to make two different whole food, plant-based desserts. Um, they're not my recipes. They're ones that I find and not everything comes from me. Um, I too have to be inspired. So I'm always on the internet looking at things. I have a few favorite blogs, um, but I find new things all the time and, and I try them and it makes me sometimes want to have to share them with you. So let's get started because things do take time and, and then we'll talk more about whatever questions one has as they arise. So the very first thing that I do want to tell you is I looked up this gastronomer from the 19th century and he said, tell me what you eat and I will tell you who you are, which I thought was, um, he was probably maybe talking about whole food plant-based, but I think he was really talking about literally like the food that you eat, the food that you love is probably you tell that to someone and they kind of can kind of figure out exactly who you are. So I thought that was kind of a cool quote. And um, although we missed Valentine's Day, tomorrow is President's Day. And, um, you know, I was thinking about presidents and, and what do they eat and what, and I learned that in the White House, because it, it's not a public place that you can't really, you don't really know what the president's favorite meal is because that's really not what they necessarily cook in the White House because probably the president has a favorite meal from his childhood, just like we all do, but it's probably not something they're cooking in the White House. So really what they're cooking in the White House is something that is, you know, physically can be done, that is something to do with family heritage and probably something to do with some kind of obligation that they have. Um, so I think that was kind of interesting. So that's my President's Day little tip. So we're going to make this vegan chocolate pie slash, I kind of call it a cake, 
but it's more of a pie, but it's a deep dish pie, and we're going to make it in a spring form pan. And many of you might not own a spring form pan, I was thinking, and I don't want that to stop you, but a spring form pan is called a spring form pan because it has, one, a removable bottom, and two, it has a spring that loosens the ring so that you can take that bottom out so when the when you're unmolding it so we're going to tighten the spring now to close it but when you're taking something out you loosen the spring now most people have these kinds of pans for cheesecake um which you certainly can make vegan um but today we're going to make our chocolate pie and what attracted me about this chocolate pie from this woman named Ella Vegan, uh, her name is Ella Vegan Blog. And what attracted me was that it was no tofu, no dairy. There was no dairy in this chocolate mousse pie. And most of the time, I know that I've done it here, when you make chocolate mousse, you blend up some kind of tofu, usually a silken tofu, and you add a sweetener, and then you add the cocoa or some kind of chocolate, and you have this wonderful chocolate mousse. Well, the amazing thing about this pie is it has no tofu. So I thought that's worth showing. So let's get started on the crust, because we do need to um, deal with the crust first. So I'm going to get out a piece of parchment, which I already have, and I took the pan and I drew a, a pencil mark around the bottom of the pan because we want to make a piece of parchment at the very bottom. And I did that with a pencil and then I folded it. Okay, and you can see it's very curly here, but I folded it. I'm just going to cut the curly part off for now. Okay, and I folded it, and you can fold it actually again. Usually what I do is I hold it up to the light, and I find where the lines need, and I fold it. So, And you can fold it again, actually. I can hold it up to the light again, and just you put it into quarters. Um, if you ever watch Jacques Pepin do this, he does it beautifully. He keeps folding, and then he just puts it in the middle, and then just cuts it um, one cut. Um, but I'm, he makes it so it's folded. I'll do that for you and just show you. He makes it so it's folded many, many times, like that, kind of like a, a very pointed thing. And then he just estimates, and then he puts an edge, and he hasn't traced it at all like me. But I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cut inside the pencil mark so I don't have any pencil mark. And then I'm just going to open this up, and we're going to have a nice circle for the bottom. Okay, and that bottom, there's no grease in this pan, and that bottom is just going to go in there. Now, you could line the sides of this pan, meaning you would take a piece of parchment. Let me just show you. Um, I found when I made this pie the first time that I didn't really need to line the sides, that the pie came out just fine. But if you wanted to line the sides, you would just line the sides like this by taking some paper and just putting it in. And then our crust is gonna obviously go in and around. See, and you would have it like, like that, okay? But I did fine with the, um, not with the sides not greased or anything, but if you feel kind of just, I don't know, you're a little timid about how it's all gonna work out, you, I would suggest that you make these strips and you go all the way around. I didn't do it the first time out of what laziness, I'm not sure, but I just said, you know what, I think this is going to be fine just having the bottom done. So this, um, the woman from this particular website encourages everyone to make this dessert uh, using measuring from a scale. And as the scale that I have had forever is an OXO, it, you know, like the OXO peelers that make all sorts of kitchen tools. And I love this OXO scale. It weighs in pounds, ounces, and kilograms. 
Um, as a baker myself, I would always try to tell you to weigh things, but I know many of you will not be able to weigh things, but I just want you to know that that's what really makes things consistent. If Wendy were to make this exact same dessert and I were weighing things and she was measuring things with cups and spoons and things, it would be hers will turn out a little bit different than mine because her hand might be a little heavier with the sweet potatoes or with the nuts or with the oats. So um, I've measured most things out already, but I did just want to encourage you, if at all you are a baker or you aspire to be a baking person, I would encourage you to get a little scale for your home because that is the best way to bake. Um, so what you're, we're going to do first is this recipe needs three and a half ounces of nuts or seeds. And the nuts or seeds could be uh, peanuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, almonds, could be any kind of nut that you want. Um, sunflower seeds, it could be that. I probably would stay away from the poppy seeds or sesame seeds, but because you, you really do want some kind of texture. Today, I'm actually using um, hazelnuts. It's a little fancy of me, but last time I used walnuts when I made this. And I don't know if any of you know what hazelnuts look like, so I kind of went the fancy route, and they look like this. They have brown skin, and um, sometimes people call them filberts, but they are called hazelnuts. And what I did with these hazelnuts, and this is just um, an extra step, and I don't even mention this in the directions, but I like to have my hazelnuts with the skin off. And many of you might make almond milk with blanched almonds. And when you blanch almonds, you often put them in hot water and you let them soak. And then the almond, the skin just pops off the almond. This, I actually roasted these hazelnuts in the oven. And I'll just show you what I did so you know. It's just an extra thing, but you don't have to do it. It just, when you roast your nuts, it gives you extra, extra flavor. So this is a, a towel that has totally a million brown crumbs. I don't know if you can see that, but when I took the roasted nuts out of the oven, they were like 350 degrees for about 10 minutes, and you could see their skins kind of popping open. I put the hazelnuts in the towel, and then I covered them, and then I rubbed them all against each other, rubbed them on the counter, just rubbed them with my hands, and voila, off comes the skin. And then this, all this flaky stuff just becomes kind of garbage. So I'm just gonna move that over here because I'll shake that out so it won't make a million brown crumbs. Again, a step that you don't need to do, but I like telling you a little bit more so that you just understand how to get more flavor. Okay, so the very first thing, we've done our lining of our pan. We've also, the other first thing that you wanna do after you line your pan, you wanna cook some sweet potatoes. Okay, these are the jewel sweet potatoes. They're the orange flesh sweet potatoes. You could use the white Hanna sweet potatoes. You could even use white potatoes if you want. But these are gonna be one part of our sweetener um, in, the, um, in the filling. And then, so I did that ahead as well. So let's make the crust first. And what did I do? I, we need three and a half ounces of the nuts and I did measure those. Okay, and then I want to also, while we're talking about the scale, I think this is an important tip for all of you to know. If you put a bowl or any kind of container, you that weighs something. So let's just say here that I'm going to, um, I measured my, my oats already, but if I were, and the amount of oats we need is 135 grams or a cup and a half or a cup and a half. But if I were to put this on the scale right now, it says that it's 259 grams, but we only need 135. Why? Because that bowl is heavy, okay? So what happens and what you need to do, I'm just gonna get a different bowl just to show you, 
is that you get an empty bowl. I'm pouring these oats here. And the bowl that you're measuring in does weigh 122 grams. So then you set it at zero. There's a button that says set at zero. So now everything, the calculator actually, and the computer, I can't, you're never gonna be able to see that, but all I did was push a button that says zero, and that zeroes out the bowl, any size container. If it's a big metal bowl, tiny little plate, you always wanna start at zero, and then you wanna measure. So if I now zero this out, and then I measure, right, I should come up with 135 grams of oats. And that's going to go in here. Now, again, I know many of you do not have the scale. And I noticed when I measured the oats, when I just tried to measure, I actually ended up with too many. So let's just as a little, just a test, uh, see if she says it's a cup and a half if we didn't weigh. So here's uh, a half a cup. Here is another half a cup. And let's just get that last little bit in there. You see, and you fall a little bit short. You see, I fall probably almost a quarter cup. Now, when I measured, it weighed too much. I just pretended, oh, I'm gonna measure and see if the measurement. So all I'm saying to you is, if you're not weighing and you're following the recipe, then you might have to make a teeny, teeny bit of adjustments when you add the dates because you want this whole thing to come together and it's the dates that's gonna hold everything. So we're gonna blend the oats and the nuts and it's gonna be noisy for one minute. Oh, and I have to plug this in. It doesn't work if you don't plug it in. Isn't that funny, Wendy? You have to plug things in to make them work. So this is gonna be noisy for one minute. <laughs> Okay, so this is all getting ground up, the nuts and the oats. Okay, and then it says that we need to add the seven ounces, and let me just remove this scale so it's not in my way. Just put it over there. And it says we need seven ounces of pitted dates. And you can, I'm using medjool dates, but you could use the dead lit nor. You just want them to be soft, okay? So if you have dates that are hard, I would actually soak them in hot water, drain off as much water as possible, and then use your dates. But because the dead lit nor can be a little harder, but these are very, very fresh um, uh, pitted medjool dates. And I weighed uh Said I weighed 200 grams. That's how much I did. So um, I didn't count. And we also need to have a teaspoon of vanilla in the crust. So I'm just going to put my teaspoon of vanilla in right this minute. Okay. And I'm just going to put that on the side there. And then we're going to add all the dates. Now, again, if you're doing measuring and this is also supposed to be very sticky, okay? It's all gonna come together so that we can actually mold it into this pan. I'm gonna move this. And I left out somewhere, I left out a few dates, just in case it, it, it needs more dates. Um, but let's hope it does it, let's hope it's perfect. And I'm pulsing, so that means that I'm not just putting the machine on, I'm taking my hand on and off the machine. And everything, now those, okay. And every nut is gonna be a little bit different, right? Cause some nuts have more oil in it. So that's why I'm saying you're, you're always gonna have to adjust. But what you want is to find this pretty, pretty sticky so that it's going to come together. Now, when I'm putting my hand in there, I'm trying to be careful not to go on the blade. And I'm going to blend it just another one few seconds, just a very few seconds. Okay. And if you're doubtful that this is sticky, see how this is coming together? You just add one. I'm going to add just one more date. 
only because I know when I use the walnuts, the walnuts had a number of, uh, had more oil than the filter. And what's important is you want that crust to be sticky, right? So that it doesn't fall apart. Because that's going to be your shell for your chocolate mix. I think this looks awesome. Good. I can see it all coming together now. Okay, and I'm going to stop this. We're going to need this machine again. So I'm going to try not to get it. I'm just going to. And you see how this looks? It's all kind of. It's already getting sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it all in. Now remember that parchment paper is at the bottom. Okay, and this is when it's fun. If you have a kid with you, it's this is this is kind of like the padding and the fun. I, I love cooking with children so much. Carol, so, yes, Wendy. Quick question: What size food processor are you using? Um, you know, I it says seven cup actually. It says it right here. I didn't know to answer you, but it, I read it. This is a Cuisinart food processor. There's lots of brands, right? There are lots of brands of food processor, but this one is seven cups. So I've just poured this out, and, and you can see I've just put it in here like this, okay? So what I'm going to do, and I have very clean hands, and I'm going to put up my sleeves. I'm going to start to push this up the side. And I'm not going to go to the total top of the pan. Um, one thing that I didn't mention is this is a seven inch spring form pan. That is what she recommends in the recipe, a seven inch. Now, if you only have one spring pan, you're not like me and you have like all different size ones. Um, I just wet my fingers a little bit because it was getting super sticky. Um, if you only have one size, it's okay, let's say you have an eight or a nine inch, it means that your pie is not gonna be this deep. It might be less, it's gonna be less shallow, right? It's gonna be not as deep, okay? So basically, I'm making a thick wall. That's the very, very first thing that I'm doing here. And I'm kind of, um, so that it's not all uneven on the top, I'm taking my thumb and I'm kind of uh, just pressing it down so that I have like a quarter inch wall, okay? I will show you in a minute. Now, if you, I just wet my fingers just a teeny bit, just so that everything wasn't getting all super, super sticky. And now the rest of it, do you see how I built up the wall all the way around? I think it could go a teeny bit higher. So I'm just gonna push this up with my hands and if you find a little hole in your wall, you just take a little bit of the mixture and you do a little patch, okay? And then what I do is I like getting the measuring cup. Sometimes I get a piece of saran wrap. Let me just see if I have a piece of saran wrap. This is another way of dealing with the bottom. I take a piece of saran wrap, I take the measuring cup, and I just start to press down. You can do this exact same thing with your hands, but the pre it's nice because this doesn't leave a lot of fingerprints. And I use the little bit of saran wrap as a way so that it's not sticking to the measuring cuff. And you basically have ended up now, I have a beautiful shell, like a really beautiful shell. Can everyone see that? Wendy, is that a good picture of the way it things look? It not only looks gorgeous, but your professional pastry chef um, experience comes right through the camera. Oh, excellent. Because I've done this only 1,000 times. And oh my gosh, and you could make yummy it's bars gorgeous. with this, you know? <laughs> like you could make this same mixture with um, in a casserole pan or something, in a flat pan, and, and then put jam and then put another top and you could make bars. So this kind of mixture might be familiar to many of you that have been making um, whole food desserts because it's just nuts, oats, and, and dates, right? So it's beautiful, it's perfect. Again, it's not up into the edge. I've probably left about hmm, maybe a quarter inch, possibly a half an inch at the, at the top, okay? But this is all ready and perfect. And we don't have to bake it or do anything, okay? Now, of course, I have crumbs everywhere. 
which makes me a little nutso. So let's just wipe this up a little bit. And we're gonna make our amazing, amazing filling. And we have to, um, actually, what do we have to do? We have, we have to melt some chocolate chips. So when you're melting chocolate chips, there are two ways of going about it. You do a double boiler, and or you melt them in the microwave. Um, for many years of my life, I never ever had a microwave in my house. Um, I have one now, and I, I don't. You could melt the chocolate for sure in the microwave, but we're just going to do it in what is my own made-up double boiler. There are pots that are professional double boilers, meaning it's pot inside of a pot. And the reason that you want to melt your chocolate in the double boiler is you don't want to just put it on your stove under a flame because you could burn that chocolate very easily. So what I've done here is I just have a pot and I have a little bit of water, probably about an inch. Okay, it really shouldn't be touching my bowl. So the bowl, I'm just putting a bowl that happens to fit in that pot. I'm gonna put it on high because we're not dealing with a gas flame. I have an electric flame here. And I just want that to come to a boil, but we're gonna measure out the chocolate and we're gonna get it to start to melt. Okay, so let's now talk about chocolate. <laughs> um, we are going to use one cup of dairy-free chocolate chips. Okay, so let's put this aside for now. We're just gonna, I'm gonna move the dates and all that. We're gonna put all that, we're just gonna put that aside. And we're gonna get our scale back, right? And it says that we need one cup or 180 grams. So I'm gonna put on the, the um, measuring, the scale. And I'm gonna put this bowl, and I'm gonna zero it out, and I'm gonna be on grams, not ounces, but grams. Now, the chips that I'm using today, um, there are plenty of kinds of vegan chocolate chips, but they all have different um, uh, sweeteners in them, okay? <laughs> and it's up to you what you end up deciding to buy, but there are many, many brands that are vegan, no dairy, but some of them have coconut sugar, some of them have um, liqueur in them. Um, I have just found that these Lily, it's called Lily, I'm just showing you, why do I like them? Because the things that are, the ingredients that are in them are chocolate, um, chocolate, that's the first ingredient. And also it's strong chocolate. These are dark baking chocolates. And, and it has a little bit of um, erythanol in it. And it has a little bit of um, vanilla extract and a little bit of stevia. But technically they have no added, you know, real processed sugar in them. So you have to just pick out the chips that are the least offensive and according to the diet that you follow, okay? You, and why do I like these? Because they actually melt and they're, it's a good, it tastes good and I'm not using a ton of them so I, I consider them acceptable. Um, I did make myself a note to tell you all about uh, a place in Santa Barbara, California, and it's literally called the Santa Barbara Chocolates. And I've never ordered from them, but I um, want to just mention it to you because someone recently served me some vegan chocolate chips from the Santa Barbara Chocolate Company, and they were out of this world delicious really rich, really chocolatey, and they have a whole line of vegan chocolate chips, and they have ones that have no added sugar. Um, so it's worth looking at their website. And um, I just wanted to mention that because recently someone had brought it to my attention. Now, their bags of chocolate chips start around $40, and that's a lot of money. Even when I buy this bag and it's $8, I just look for it on sale, and then I buy a bunch of bags, and then I put it in the freezer. So we need 100 grams, and um, based on me showing you, it says, or one cup, and I better get the recipe back in front of me because I don't have this thing memorized. So it says one, it says one cup or 180 grams. 
So just as a test, I'm going to measure out one, what I think is one cup. Here's one cup. Maybe it has too much. And then I'm going to put it in the bowl, and I'm going to get to 180 grams. And let's just see how fast I get to 180 grams. See, here I'm at 171. So it needs just a few more. Oops, there's 180. Get a few chips back in. And this is now we are at 180 grams. And again, if for consistency, for Wendy to make this dessert the same exact way as I'm making it, measuring is the best way. But if you don't have the scale, then you can't use that way of measuring. Now we're immediately, I hear that this is starting to boil. I'm going to put the chocolate in, in the, it's again, not directly on the double boil, it's in the double boiler, and that chocolate is going to start to melt while we do our other things, okay? And I want to just rinse out this uh, bowl of the Cuisinart just a little bit. I don't have to scrub it or anything. Why? Because it, um, it's, all, it's relatively all going to go to the same place, all into the cake. And like I said, this, what's amazing about this, this chocolate mousse is that it is made with no tofu. And that's very unusual, and that's what I think is super special. Um, if any of you could guess what's in it, if you don't have the recipe, it's made with sweet potatoes, avocados, and uh, our sweetener of our own choosing. And that sweetener can be maple syrup, that could be date paste, that could be date syrup. Um, that's, that will be up to you, what kind of sweetener. But the main sweetener is coming from the sweet potatoes. Okay, so let's get this dry. Wendy, are there any questions at the moment while I'm just drying things off here? Um, yes, in fact, there are. There uh -huh. are? I tried to uh, answer this for myself, but how <laughs> would you rate the taste, the difference in taste between dairy-free chocolate chips or vegan chocolate chips and regular chocolate chips? Um, I think that the taste, you know, someone just gave me for Valentine's Day a bar of chocolate and I saw it and I was just like, is it vegan? Do you know? And, and, and the crazy thing, it was, a, it was an artisan bar and it only had cacao powder and, and organic sugar, which I don't really eat, but it was a Valentine's present. Um, and it was so strong and so good. So I guess I, I don't really have an answer specifically, but... I, I don't miss any dairy in the chocolate. If the cacao in the chocolate is good, strong, 60% oh, and over, and it's not over 70, you know, because you start to get bitter with the chocolate when it's at that 80 and 90, which I love, but it's harder to, to take in because it's super strong. I, I, don't, miss, I don't see a difference, really. I don't. And what was your thinking in your head? I would say almost the same thing that you do. Big surprise. I mean, it's it, they taste stronger to me. Um, the big yeah, because I think they don't have that dairy. They're not being diluted with dairy, right? Yeah. It's just like pure, as pure chocolate from the bean as you can get. Right. And usually that only happens if it's not uh, any sugar or, um, you know, if they're mostly unsweetened. Because once it's too much sugar, then I'd say Correct. that. Correct. Then you're just eating the sugar and you can't even taste the chocolate. Right. You and know? like I said, the vegan bar that someone just gave me that was an artisan bar that's made here in town. And it was to die for because it was just, I ate one tiny bite every day for like a week, you know? So. So anyway, this is cooking. This is definitely cooking, and I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to get an oven mitt really carefully here. And I'm just going to, I'm going to lower it a little bit because it's boiling like crazy. But I just want to show you it is starting to melt. Okay, so I want to get everything else in the pot, um, in the Cuisinart, while we're doing this. So let's move this over for a moment. We might need to scale again. So we've got the chips in. It says we need one fourth cup of maple syrup or any other kind of liquid. And I'm just gonna use the maple syrup. Uh, at this, it's just a fourth of a cup, but I have shown you before that there is on the market 
this stuff called organic date syrup. Um, it's been in my fridge and it's been out and I, if I try to get it out, it will be impossible. So I, I did take it out early enough. So, and you could use date paste if you want, but we're only using one fourth cup of maple syrup. So I'm gonna get that out and measured. Okay, and that's gonna definitely go into the food processor. Um, this is cooking and get melting really fast. So one fourth cup is going in to here. Now it says that we need eight and a half ounces of ripe avocado. Now, why is it important that we measure? Because as you all know, every avocado is different. Sometimes there's teeny weeny avocados, and then there's, sometimes there's a large avocado. Now I have, and you want ripe avocados. So I'm going, I have two, I have four avocados here. It claims that I only need to have two. That's what it says in the recipe. But again, it's just like a carrot. Carrot comes in all different sizes, right? And so does the, um, you know, I say, it's nice to know that you need two cups of cooked carrots instead of two carrots, because carrots are always different sizes. So the avocado also is different sizes. So I'm just gonna open this up and I have to say, where I live, I am spoiled by avocados. You know, um, there are places, other places in the country where I live where they're very, very expensive. But since I moved here, um, I'm in, they're not grown here. They're grown mostly in California, but I end up with the most beautiful avocados. So I put my bowl on, we're gonna measure. I zeroed it out and it says that we need 240 grams okay so i'm just going to let's see if that actually is two avocados okay i'm gonna put this so far we're up to 61 okay so one avocado is 128 okay so that makes sense right because if we needed two and one is so we're just gonna put here the next half Okay, and I would call these kind of medium-sized avocados. I would not call them large ones, and I would not call them the teeny weeny ones, okay? <laughs> but that's why measuring is super important. Now we're up to 219 here, and we are at 233, okay? And it says we need 240. Is that worth me cutting open another avocado? It actually is. Why? Because this one is super ripe, right? Um, and I knew that I had let it go, right? It's not a brand new one. And I'm gonna use some of it because I only need some of it. And let's just put that in. And we are suddenly at 259 and let's just become at 240. Um, something that I didn't mention, Wendy, earlier is baking is really about a science. And you really do um, want to be as accurate. It's not like making marinara or making a pot of soup or stew where you throw in a little bit of this, you throw in a little bit of this. It is something, now you can do a little bit of ad-libbing, I'm not saying that you cannot, but you really do want to have accurate measurements so that there's consistency and accuracy because everything is a science. Okay, so that's very important. So I'm at 240 grams, just exactly what they said. Um, if you only bought two avocados for this meal and you didn't have another backup, then I would just use exactly what you have and you just might end up with something that's not as creamy, okay? So this is now gonna go in here as well, the avocado. And then it says we need one cup of sweet potato. Okay, and we have our measuring cup and I have the sweet potato, and I'm just gonna get a fork, and I peeled those sweet potatoes. Now, I always have sweet potatoes in the refrigerator, just because I do a lot of batch cooking. I'm a single person, and it'd be crazy to just cook one potato at a time. So I cook six potatoes at a time. I cook a lot of potatoes. So I always have them in the fridge. So I'm putting this in my one cup measure, I just peel two. You can see that I peel two. I'm kind of pretty close here. If I wasn't measuring, 
So I have my one cup. It doesn't look totally full. We're going to put this back at zero. And it says, again, I'm just going to show you. So this is my one cup. And it says that we need 22 grams. So let's just take all this one cup out and see where we're at. And we're at 22 grams. Hmm. What happened here? We are not at 22 grams. Maybe, hmm, that's an interesting thing. What, why is that? Did I not zero out the bowl? It's possible that I didn't zero out the bowl. So zero out the bowl, zero, now we're at zero. And okay, well, this is 197. Now that's, that could be her recipe because it says 22 grams and I don't know, I'm at 196 here, but we're gonna go with one cup of sweet potato. So, and then we need three tablespoons of cocoa powder. Cacao powder is what I'm using. And Wendy and I had a long discussion about this before we went on, about the difference between cacao powder and cocoa powder. And Wendy, didn't we, we've talked a lot about this in other times that I've been baking, right? And you really want the cacao powder that's the most unprocessed. Um, the, the cocoa powder, um, again, there's a different spelling. It looks the same, cocoa and cacao, but the cacao powder is better because it's not um, processed, highly processed at, at, the, at a high temperature. And that's what you're really wanting to buy when you're dealing with powdered sugar, uh, cocoa powder. And you also want to be careful when you buy your cocoa powder because a lot of manufacturers sell it for the hot chocolate. And that obviously has um, sugar in it. So you wanna just be careful, always look at the bag or the box that you're buying and see what it is that you're buying. Um, this chocolate, yes, Wendy, you have a thing? Um, the cacao is C-A-C-A-O and the cocoa is C-A-C-O-A. -A. Correct, correct. So there's cacao, I, and I'm sorry, I don't, I have a bag, if we have a minute later, I'll dig it out where I have saved the bag. Mine is in a jar, so I can't show you the brand that I use. I use the Novitas. Um, I talked about this when we, every time we bake, I talk about this. So I decided not to make this a focus of today, um, but it is a good question, Wendy. They are different. They have the O and the A. They all have the same letters. It's just how it's spelled how it's spelled um and um yeah that's all i want to really say about the cacao powder but if you only have cocoa powder that's okay too okay so we've got our cook our powder three tablespoons and then we have our sweet potato our avocado we have our sweetener and then we have now i've turned the burner off and we have our melted chocolate Okay, so we want to get all this in here, all at one time, the melted chocolate, and we're going to blend this. And we want to do this rather, I don't want to say fast, but promptly, because this melted chocolate is going to harden up pretty quickly. So I'm just going to put that over there. We're going to need that. We're going to need that back. Actually, let's move the scale, and then we're going to put this here, and we are going to get the lid which is right here, okay? And we're gonna have noise for one minute. And we're just gonna blend this up till it's totally smooth. Now, who would have ever thought that dessert, you know, like I wouldn't, when I serve this, I'm gonna not say, oh, I made it of avocado and sweet potato. Let them think whatever they want that is in it. I'm gonna put this on. Oh my God, does it smell so good? It's like heavenly. And I'm gonna just go along the sides. Um, I just threw in the big avocado, you know, I didn't really mash it up. So I'm kind of mashing one of the halves up. Probably smart to not just throw in the avocado in halves, maybe cut it up a little bit, okay? I'm 
Okay, that should be, oh my God, it looks so good. I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. Look at what it looks like. Chocolate okay. heaven. Amazing. One of the questions in the chat or comments was asking if this is a special occasion dessert. And as I watched Carol make it with the hazelnuts, the dates, and the avocado, and the uh, chocolate chips, I would say, yeah, this is a special occasion. And this is what I say, Wendy, too, about desserts. I mean, this is, um, I guess Mona was the person that asked that. And I like knowing that she, that's a very good question, Mona. And what I would say is, just because they're whole food plant-based, we think they are healthy desserts. I'm not going to lie to you and say this is far better than eating something that has laden with butter, sugar, oils, all sorts of processed things. These are healthy because they're coming from the whole food. We started with the avocado, with the whole dates, with the whole sweet potato. But I must preface, dessert is dessert, okay? And it, especially if you have a weight problem, um, you want to really think about um, how often you're eating dessert. <laughs> and uh, you really want to be careful, right? <laughs> about how much sweets you're eating. Just like, you know, we're not supposed to eat uh, more than one to two ounces of nuts a day. And why is that? Well, nuts are very healthy for us, but a large quantity of nuts have a ton of fat in them. And all that fat is not good. So what our dessert, when we, when we make our chocolate cookies, you're gonna see every dessert, what, what do we have in this that has replaced our normal desserts is we have our sweet potatoes, that's our sweetener. We added a little maple syrup. We have our chocolate. We have our avocado, which is the fat, right? That's our fat. We have no oil, we have no butter, but we still have fat. We need those things to make desserts, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it is absolutely special occasion. This is a decadent pie. So I would say definitely special occasion. Oh, and I did want to say that if you don't have a spring form pan, I nearly forgot this point, Wendy. I wanted to tell everyone that if you have a muffin pan, I really believe you could make this dessert in these little muffin pans and you would put little pieces of parchment at the bottom. You don't have a removable bottom in the muffin pan, but you would press your little cakes your little things in here. And then you would get a little kind of like individual servings. And I think that would be lovely to serve individually. And this kind of cake can be in the freezer for several weeks, okay? So I absolutely think that you could make them in the muffin pans, have individual servings, which I love the most. I don't usually make gigantic servings like this because I'm one person. And who is going to help me eat this cake unless I invite everyone over or I deliver it somewhere where there's a group of people. Um, I'm just trying to get this all out because it's all so luscious and delicious. You see that I've piled it in. I'm going to, I tell you, uh, chocolate has a way of getting up your arm and getting all over the place. And then I have a nice spatula here and I'm just going to press this in. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm pressing this in and I'm making it all nice and even. And this cake could be pie cake, whatever you wanna call it, could be eaten in about an hour. Um, the last time that I made it, I let it sit overnight. And if you're in a hurry to serve it for any reason, you definitely could put it in the freezer for a very few minutes, okay? Now, what she recommends in her original, um, her, her, her recipe, is she says that you take more chocolate, another half a cup of chocolate, and you melt it on the double boiler, and then you pour it as another layer on top of this cake. But you can do whatever you want creatively at this point. You don't even have to put the chocolate layer. The chocolate layer is just another, it, it gets hard. So you'll have crust, 
you'll have nice mousse filling, and then you would have a layer of chocolate. That just for me mentally seemed over the top, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, but she, it is the original recipe. And what I like to do at this point is my very favorite thing is chocolate and raspberries. Um, if some of you like blueberries, you use blueberries. Uh, in the summer when the cherries are out, you could use cherries and chocolate. Goes so well together. Wendy and I used to make a chocolate cherry ice, ice cream all the time. So we know that cherries go with the chocolate. But when someone says to me, what do you want for your birthday? I will always say, I want chocolate and raspberries. So this is what I do. I take a little bit, um, there's cocoa powder that is also called black cocoa, which is dark, dark, dark chocolate. And I have a tiny little jar of that. And you could take your regular cacao powder. But what I'm doing is I'm going to dust the top um, right now. And I'm going to make sure that I don't get it on the counter. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to pour. I want to put a little piece of paper. Here's a piece of parchment. Why? Because the cocoa powder, I'm probably going to put right back in the thing. See, some of it is going on the paper. And I'm just going to slightly give this a dusting, a light, light dusting of dark, dark chocolate. And you could do this with, there's no sugar. In this so you don't want to have too much it's just adding a layer of dark chocolate and it's a light light dusting to the top okay and then while it's somewhat soft and not too hard so I'm gonna eventually put this extra well we can do it right here you can just see that I'm saving the rest of this and it's going right back in my little tiny jar that's why it's helpful to have little pieces of parchment paper around. And we're going to have the raspberries. Remember I told you that's, she doesn't put any fruit on it, but I can't imagine chocolate without it. Right now, if you want to put strawberries, um, that a lot of strawberries are out. They're coming from California right now. You can find organic strawberries. They're a little bit expensive. I have organic uh raspberries here and because that is my very very favorite combo um, I'm just kind of putting them all the way around right all the way around and this is now gonna go in whoops I just put it sideways I didn't want to put it sideways and this takes a few seconds just to decorate and we're going to see I am um, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator <laughs> Maybe I'll put it in the freezer to see. I wasn't planning on unmolding it during our demo because it really does need at least an hour to firm up. So I really don't want to try to cut this until it's really firm. Otherwise, it's just going to be all gooey on the knife. And I want a nice, clean, beautiful slice. Carol? Yes, Wendy. Speaking of things being gooey or potentially being gooey, yes. Um, what do you think about using a silicone muffin pan? Would silicone work? I know that they. Tend I think to that it would work definitely. The hmm, probably what I would do because the silicone pan is a good idea. Wendy, I have a. I don't have a big muffin one. I have a little mini one, and you could press those little cups in. And probably what I would do is. I would put those cups in the refrigerator. After you built the bottom and the walls, I would put it in the refrigerator. And then what I would probably do is I would take those cups out of their little muffin tin because it's all flimsy and I would put them on a tray. So you basically would have cups that were made out of the oats and the dates and the nuts that you choose. And then I would put the filling in when the cups are out so that I don't know because even I would probably form the cups in the muffin pan ahead because who knows once you put the filling in if it's going to be too heavy that's the beauty of the spring form pan is that it it the the sides open up and release and then you put you know pull the cake out right you see? 
It's so, a question we got, which is, can you use um, parchment paper muffin cups? In other words, would you use those parchment? Probably muffin? not. I mean, I, it's, I understand that question, and I probably would stay away from those. That, you could. It's just that those, those are usually ah. You know what I would use? I'll tell you what I would use. Just wait one second because I had a brilliant idea. This is something no one's going to have in their home, but there's a wonderful store, especially if you're in New York City. It's called New York Cake Company. It's on 21st and 6th Avenue. And um, these are called tulip cups. <laughs> and they're paper. They're paper. They look like this. Can you see, Wendy? They're basically paper. I used to make Oscar Academy cupcakes in these because this was the red carpet. That's why they're red, but they come in all different colors, brown, they come in all colors. And why I would prefer to use these over those normal muffin um, paper liners is those muffin liners have little little ridges all throughout, right? right? So I think it would just be weird because the date crust would get all stuck. And I think you just want something smooth. Now, these, you can see, are made of paper. If you were to pull this out, look, it's a square, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what you could maybe do is just cut some brown parchment paper <laughs> that most of you probably have in your club cabinet and just form it so that all the sides are overlapping and make your own tulip cup and then put it in. So that's my idea on the spot for Great that idea. person. Great idea. And then uh, backing up a little bit, um, I missed some of what you said about the chocolate chips you were using. The ones you're using, are they unsweetened? Um, they are technically no added sugar. Uh, mm -hmm. They're Lily, and I like Lily the best because they're the yummiest. I've tried every brand. Honestly, Wendy, I've tried every brand, and I always go back to this brand. Right. Um, they it does have stevia. a little bit of stevia in it. Not yeah. much, you know, not much. And um, yeah, I'm just looking at the total amount of sugar it has. Well, zero sugar, technically, but it has stevia in it. But it has a little bit. Um, okay. And I just find that they are the best baking chips because they melt. And some of those other ones don't melt properly. Do you have any other questions? So this is done, Wendy. This is done. Can everyone see? It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm gonna quickly put it in, I'm gonna put it in the freezer at this very second. I think I have room, I'm not sure if I do, but I'm gonna put it in the freezer. I'm trying to hope that the puppy who's following me at the moment is not going to put her head in the freezer. Um, and we're gonna have to get onto our cookies, otherwise we're never gonna get done. Yep. I talk too much and they're never gonna get done. And I really want to show you these cookies, and I'm very excited about them. So are we ready to move on, or are there any other questions before we move on to the next thing? We're ready. Okay, fantastic. So this is a recipe that I don't know this particular person. <laughs> um, she's not somebody I follow. And what is her name? Her name is, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, I will tell you in a second. She has written a book called The Mediterranean Plate, her name is Debbie Adler. I don't know the book at all. I found the recipe on the T colon website. Um, and I love these cookies so much that I had to show them to you. Um, I have made chocolate uh, chip cookies just during the plantathon recently. So um, if you're interested in chocolate chip cookies that are made with chickpeas, um, you can go back to the Plantathon. We have a link to provide and, and sh share that with you, or you just go back to the YouTube channel and you find the Plantathon, and you'll see um, that I did make the chocolate chip cookies with the chickpeas. These are technically gluten free, which is great because I have many friends that are have issues with gluten, and they're made with my one of my favorite things, which is tahini. So let's um, make these cookies, get them into the oven. I have the oven preheated at 325 degrees. Um, I'm going to make a half a recipe. That shouldn't matter to you. I'm just going to tell you the measurements out loud because I've cut everything in half 
because I'm going to end up with like 10 cookies. And that is plenty for me to have because I will try not to consume them all at one time. So that is why I'm making half. So in this bowl, we're not using the scale for this recipe. The recipe is written out in cups. And I have one cup of almond flour already in the bowl. And then we need to have the original recipe called for three-fourths cup tahini. And if we're going to half three-fourths cup, someone might be scratching their head and say, I don't even know what half of three-fourths is. Um, but you need to convert that three-fourths into tablespoons. So three-fourths is 12 tablespoons, right? If you have 12 tablespoons in three-fourths of a cup, then we need six tablespoons of tahini, okay? So I'm getting this all in front of you here, and I have a brand new jar of tahini. Um, it's kind of the runny tahini. I have to open it up. I see that I haven't even cracked open its plastic lid. It's a brand new one. Um, it's a tahini that I really like, this brand. All tahini is not created equal. I do want to tell you that. Um, the most common that people find in the store is Joya. And it's a brand I don't really love. But you always have to mix it. Okay, this is our fat, right? Our fat is the almond flour, right? And this is our additional fat. So again, these cookies are going to be delicious, but you don't want to be eating four or five of them because they're full of calories. But they are made of all whole food, natural things. So I'm going to get a measuring spoon. And this is a two tablespoon. I have these spoons that are incremental, meaning that they're odd sizes. So this is two tablespoons. So I'm going to measure right here. I'm just doing this all in the bowl. So that's two. And remember, I said we need six. So two, four, and then six. We're just going to get that in. And that's that. Okay, that's going in just like that. Now, the fat, we already, I told you we have fat. Fat is in the tahini, fat is in the almonds. I'm just gonna move this over here. We're another replacement for oil, if you're baking. Um, one is applesauce, and another great one could be sweet potatoes. And this particular recipe is using pumpkin puree. Um, and we need to have uh, one tablespoon. The original recipe says that we need two, but we need one. So you might say, okay, Carol, I'm opening a can of organic pumpkin puree, and what am I going to do with it now that I have it, right? What am I going to do with this can? Well, I'm going to first tell you, you're going to put it in the refrigerator. You're definitely going to, you could take it out of the can, store it in a jar, um, and you could make a number of things. You could add it to the next soup that you make. You could eat, uh, you could mix it into your hummus, which would be delicious. There are so many things, but don't let this deter you that you're only using a, one tablespoon for half a recipe. The original one needs two. And so I'm just going to put this aside. I will tell you that my puppy, she eats at least a tablespoon of this pumpkin puree in her food. So honestly, I'm not going to be making anything else with this. You could make cornbread or you could make pumpkin bread. There's so many things. But this actually will go to my puppy's food. So I'm going to just put it on the side but it absolutely is going into the refrigerator. So one tablespoon, then we need to have some kind of sweetener. Again, you could use a date paste. You could use uh, a, a here for convenience. I'm going to measure one fourth cup. And I don't know my liquid here. We used this last time. And one fourth cup is four tablespoons. I could have measured it out there. That's going in there. Um, you could use the date syrup or a paste to either one. For convenience, I'm using that right this moment. And then we need to have uh, one fourth teaspoon of baking soda. That's the full recipe. And I need to half that. So we're going to just have like one eighth of a teaspoon. And I don't have a one eighth teaspoon. So I'm just going to, and this is baking soda. And I'm just going to kind of eye it and use like half of that. Okay, and that's going to go in there. 
And then I have a bunch of pistachio nuts. She recommends putting that on top, which I think is delicious when you're using the tahini. It makes it a very, almost like a Middle Eastern chocolate chip cookie. Now, again, you could do so many things. You don't even have to add the chocolate chips. You could add dried cranberries. Um, you know, so many of these recipes. I wanted to mention when I was making the cake that it's really yummy to um, put coconut in with the dates and the nuts, if that was something that interested you. Um, there's just so many. I like when recipes are a good uh, template that you can actually move around a little bit in it and add things to your liking. Okay, so I'm going to move this. I'm going to make room uh, for the sheet pan. And I have the sheet pan lined with parchment paper. We haven't even added our chocolate chips. We need three-fourths of a cup of the, of the chocolate chips. And um, I have a, two tablespoons. Let's just see if I can make this work, um, even though it has tahini in it a little bit. So here's two and four, let's get all of them out there, and six. Okay, those are the chocolate chips that are going in there. I've almost finished the bag between the two desserts. Okay, and uh, we're going to get that. Let's move some of these things out of the way. It's just good to move things. And we're just going to mix those chocolate chips in. I have the oven preheating at 325 degrees. And we're on time pretty much, Wendy. Maybe what we're going to do while we're, while the cookies are cooking, Wendy, we could have some announcements because I know you have a million of them. And we'll come back and the cookie should be done. Okay? That sounds great. Yeah. Does that sound okay? Because we do great. need time for the cookies to cook. And I want to be able to show you something that is finished. Yep. Okay. That sounds great. But then before you leave us, uh, before you go baking them or putting them in the oven, um, can you use black tahini? Um, oh, my God. It would be probably right. delicious. Right. Who, oh, my God. Did you just come up with that yourself? Wendy? No, it was a great question from Danielle in the chat. And <laughs> Oh, I love that. I'm, I'm seeing fun. that my, um, my scooper is, is having a scooping issue, which makes me want to go get another scooper. Um, just a second while I'm talking to you. What size, uh, what size scooper are you using? Um, I have this one. I always use it. I, I refer to it as called the number 40 and 40 as in the number. It's about an inch and a half. Um, I'm not sure um, the little thing is stuck and I don't want to delay here. So no delay. We can't delay. We'll just um, wet my hands here. We'll go right into it on our own here. Again, I like the scooper because it makes them all unified, right? But that's okay. We can have a scooper. I have many size scoopers. Let's just see if I can have a different size. Oh, maybe I'll make smaller cookies. Also, while you're checking, um, what brand and color of the date syrup are you using? Um, uh, the date syrup is here. This is, um, this is the one that I have here. Can you see? It just says Just Date. It's just called Just Date. Yeah, it's a company in California, I think. I'm not sure where they're from. Let's see. They also make pomegranate syrup, which I really like. Um, where are they from? It doesn't... Hmm. They, don't, they are from California. San Francisco, my old town. Yeah. My old hometown. Okay, this is not good. I don't like the way this is working, so we're just going to get... Instead of my fingers, it's better. We're just going to get a scoop here. I wanted to make them all even. I'm about making the cookies all nice and even because that's what we have to do. And we're just scooping them so they're like that. I think the last time I didn't put as many chocolate chips in. This is a lot of chocolate chips. Anyway, these are going to go into the oven. Um, we have to flatten them just a little bit. Let me just make sure that I get all the dough because it is, it's really aggravating when your scoop doesn't work because I love this scoop and I hope it's not broken. I'm sure 
that it's not. It's just a matter of looking at it more carefully. It's going to go right into the sink right now. But the scoop is the best way to go. You always want to use the scoop because it makes nice uniform cookies. And as you can see, half a recipe can make almost like 12 cookies. 10 cookies. How many cookies do you want, right? I find that if they're in the house, I'll eat them. So I have to make less because unless I'm having people over to share with, I don't want to consume them all. And I love that they're made with tahini. I love that. I love that because I love that flavor of, 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 of tahini. I'm just washing my hands. Okay, so the way that this original recipe is, is you could just bake them like this, but it tells you to flatten them a little bit. So I'm doing that. Okay, with I just kind of moistened my fingers. I have a carrot, a little bit of carrot on my hand somehow. I'm just kind of flattening them. And then it says to put some pistachios on top. Now, this is decadent. It's almost like we're going back to Moma, Mona in her question. Is this a dessert that you eat every day? Well, maybe not, because this is certainly very fancy to have tahini, almond flour, and also to have pistachios. And she even takes it one step further at the very end and drizzles chocolate on top. Now, I don't do that because how much more chocolate could one have? Maybe you could have endless amounts um, and that would make them very, very pretty. But I find just decorating the top with the pistachio nuts make it kind of enough for me. Maybe if I was serving at a wedding or doing the cookies for a special, special occasion, would I take it that one step further and put the drizzle of chocolate when they come out of the oven? But right now, these are going to go into the oven as is. I've kind of pushed the pistachios into the middle, into the middle so that they're not going to fall apart, and they're going right into the oven as is, right this minute. And Wendy... If there are any questions, now is the time, or you can come back to me after announcements, and hopefully the cookies will be almost done. That sounds great. We will definitely come back to see the finished cookies, and I will jump in. Um, the announcements are kind of what I uh, mentioned at the top of the show. I just wanted to let you know that um, Plant Powered Metro New York is celebrating its fourth anniversary in March. And as part of our anniversary celebration, we are relaunching or redoing. We had a jump start in January. We're doing another one in March, March 2nd to April 2nd. For those of you who are just transitioning, I highly, highly, highly recommend this deep immersion. It's a relatively deep immersion into, um, into plant, this whole world of plant-based eating, the science, the evidence, the joy of the cooking, uh, cooking demo. You'll have mentors. You have um, the mentors not only meet with you once a week, but um, often in many, many groups, we have WhatsApp threads and the mentors often available. Um, can't promise that, but usually that happens. So you have a pretty um, accessible um, opportunity to overcome a lot of the old habits from standard American way of eating into more plant-based or entirely plant-based lifestyle. So I highly recommend the jump start for anybody, refresher or newbie. And then on February 23rd, also check out our website because we have a bunch of um, talks coming up with the pioneering Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn uh, from noon to 1.30 on February 23rd. Um, he, we will be interviewing him. This event is co-sponsored with the JCC Manhattan. I hear uh, Carol's little dog, Ayla, back in the background. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, so uh, Dr. Elselstyn, unbelievably distinguished and pioneering plant-based physician, uh, will be um, on hand giving his presentation. The presentation is also sponsored by the Esselstyn Family Foundation. So I believe he'll be speaking with, um, he and his daughter Jane will be uh, in that um, 
presentation. And then that evening, Jim Spellos and two other people from Net Powered Metro New York, Enrica Seneca, I believe, and Ben Martins are hosting the Heart to Healthy Heart That Could Save Your Life um, that evening with uh, Dr. Andrew Freeman from the uh, National Jewish Health organization in Denver, Colorado. So that should be a really interesting presentation. And then Friday, February 21st, 24th, we're having, um, we're joining Harlem Grown right here in New York. I believe these are two live events in honor of Black History Month. Um, Harlem Grown is having a wellness festival and we'll be there. Uh, we'll have a booth from three until 5.30. So please join us for that. If you're here in New York City, it's an amazing wonderful event and we're happy supporters and partners with Harlem Grown. And um, later we have a cooking demo with three of the plant-based chefs here in New York. And um, that's, I think, co-sponsored by Harlem Grown as well. And in any case, look it up on the website. There's a bunch of details. And then we will have ongoing programming, of course, in March. Um, the Esselstyn event, by the way, that's supported by the Esselstyn Foundation, it's in two parts. It's February 23rd, and then it's March, mm, the following Thursday, whatever that is. <laughs> Not sure. Anyway, um, look at the, you know, please come join us. Please get our newsletter. There's a bunch of interesting things going on in the newsletter. Um, one of our uh, founders, Lynn Diamond, is currently at True North Health Center, and she's undertaking the water fast. And so she's posting um, either on the website or on the newsletter, uh, her experience as she's going through the water fasting. And that's gonna, that's probably, I mean, she just started. So I'm expecting it'll be a very interesting um, unfolding of, uh, of what she's doing out there just to detoxify. So- um, Wow, that's a wow, Wendy. I didn't know what Lynn was doing that. Yeah, she's over at True North with Dr. Alan Goldhammer. I will say, because I want to give the cookies um, time to bake, for those of you, because some of you mentioned this in the, or at least one of you mentioned this in the chat, um, there, Chef AJ, who is also very close with Alan Goldhammer at True North and Dr. Furman, and you know, very well established also in the plant-based community, and Chef Carol often appears on Chef AJ's shows, um, but she's doing a weight loss, free weight loss summit this week with all kinds of plant-based doctors. So for those of you who are interested in weight loss, which um, I guess I'm mentioning because we've had some um, special desserts today, but after these desserts, if you're interested in this weight loss summit, it's quite fascinating and um, highly recommended. She's got specialists in food. And Wendy, Chef AJ's having a dessert cookbook come out in this she year. Is. And she I is. have two recipes in that book, um, yes. but 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 she's she's dedicated herself to you know because she was a dessert chef too. Yes, it's very similar to me, and um, she's she's making a whole cookbook on just desserts. Yes, so. exactly, exactly. She has um, numerous things also on the YouTube channel. So um, we're all good friends of Chef AJ's and uh, the Esselstyns and the Furmans and you know the whole plant based world is um, available to you through plant-based <laughs> Metro New York. So do check us out and check them out as well. well thanks Wendy for all of those announcements. Thanks yeah. so much. And I just want to show everyone Isla because yeah. you hear her crying sometimes at my feet and she's here and she's crying because she just wants attention. Um, she seems to be quiet all day long until I go on to, to speak to all of you. And then she's like crying because she, wants her own attention. Um, so I'm gonna put her down and I'm gonna show you the cake. Um, is really not ready to come out of this pan, but I very much wanna show it to you. So let me put her down for one second, just for, so you see. I'm just gonna, but I wanted you all to see her um, because some people ask about her. And of course I need to wash my hands always. Um, I, I'm now back and I just wanna rinse my hands because I've been with a doggy. Um, this is a doggy that eats much of vegetables. 
Um, you know, I was talking about her getting the pumpkin puree. She also um, gets, I, today I made soup and I made a big pot of vegetable broth and those carrots that cook and some of the vegetables I actually cut up and I end up giving to her in her food. So this is the, the, the cake that we put in the freezer. You know that it's only been in there maybe 20, 25 minutes. The minimum it should be hardened at least an hour. So I'm kind of risky. So this spring form pan, I immediately open it. Okay, I open it and I run a knife around the edge to just the cake, the, 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 um, the crust actually left the sides, but I wanted kind of to push it away a little bit so that it wasn't stuck, okay? And then what happens here is this spring fork, and now you slide it onto your hand, okay? And what happens is you take this and you take it out like that, okay? The ring is basically on my arm. This actually will go on a platter, okay? And you can see what it looks like. It's out of the pan, look how beautiful, right? And you could potentially slide it off this um, bottom with taking a spatula underneath it, but I'm not going there yet. <laughs> um, I don't wanna go there only because, as I said, this cake really should be harder, okay? And then what I would do is take a knife, a warm knife. I'm going to run it under hot water really fast. Again, we're kind of in territory here that I normally wouldn't be in, but I want to be able to show you. I've kind of warmed up the knife, and I'm just going to carefully cut this, even though it's not really ready to cut, right? I'm just going to take a slice out of it. And... Oh. And then I'm going to be careful at the bottom here, right? I'm going to be, it's the first piece of anything, just like when you cut lasagna, right? Is always the hardest to get out, right? And I'm just wanting to go between the paper. Of course, it's nice to have a plate ready, but here's our slice, right? And a raspberry fell off there. But again, it's pretty hard but it would just be so much nicer if it were just a little harder, okay? And I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put that, that knife is there. Let's just get a plate. And I really believe you only need a thin piece of this cake, okay? Pie, cake, whatever you wanna call it. You only need a little bit. Um, I could measure it and say everybody gets two raspberries. That's what's good about putting the raspberries around the edge. Um, and now let's look at the cookies, okay? Um, they haven't been in the oven probably long enough, but they're getting done. They're almost done, so let's give it a very few minutes. I wanna just give just one second. Do you want to ask some questions, Wendy? Let's see if anybody has questions, because uh, I give the cookies another minute or two. It, do you have any, anybody have questions, Wendy? Sorry, I was muted. Um, there are no more questions right now, unless somebody wants to put questions in the chat. Um, but a number of people have, in fact, done the jump start that are um, registering that in the chat. And, you know, it's thrilling. You know, it's very, very exciting. Oh, here we go. What brand and color of maple syrup did she use? Um, she didn't use maple syrup. What she used um, was- I did use a little bit of maple syrup, when oh, I I'm did. Sorry. I did, I had both syrups out. That's why you might've been confused because I did show both. Um, I took this date paste, date syrup out of the fridge too late. And it was gonna take forever for it to like, I needed to be upside down and I should have taken it out earlier. Got so it. for convenience, I just used a dark color, uh, organic maple syrup. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. But definitely try to buy, if you're buying maple syrup, you wanna buy the organic kind. Organic and, and yeah, dark, I think, also. Um, uh, and then we have another question, which is how, ma how many people do you think that cake would serve? Oh my God, I think it would serve 
um, well, I'll tell you, it should serve at least 10 or 12 people. Yeah. Because, and I'm looking, and I'm, if I were to cut this cake, of course, I would cut it in half. And everyone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yep, 12. Everybody gets two raspberries. <laughs> so, so, of course, I would cut it in half and then cut it into quarters and then the quarters into thirds. Um, and honestly, I'm telling you, this is enough of this cake, right? Look at how much the width is, right? Yeah. The, you're looking at probably an inch and a quarter, maybe. But it's rich, right? And you see how the dusting of chocolate is on the top? Um, can you see? I don't know if you can yeah, see really that. Yeah, dusting, but we know it's there. We but it's there, and it's darker than the actual filling, so it's very pretty. And, you know, in the old days, I would have probably dusted some confectioner sugar on top of it. In the old days, I would have liked to have had white powder and dark powder, but there's no replacement for that. Um, <laughs> That's why I do the cocoa and she melts the chocolate and makes another chocolate, a solid chocolate layer. So that is this dessert. And I, any of you that are, might be watching who live near me, please feel free to come over because what am I going to do with a whole cake? I think um, we have people falling in love with Ayla as well. So I know that's why I you met might her. get a visitor. That's why I'm showing you who she is. Because people are so wanting to know. People write to me after the show sometimes, Wendy, and says, can we see a picture of your dog? And I'm like, okay, if that's what you want, sure. You know, but it, I was just about one, just a little over one now. I'm just making a little, little thing for this. And these cookies are pretty done. They're almost, they have another minute or two, but um, I'm just showing you what they look like. And I'm going to get a, hmm, I don't have, I don't know where my spatula went, it went somewhere, but that's okay. What we really needed was a pie serving thing for the pie. But you see these cookies need another minute or two, but this is what they look like. Oh my God, they look delicious. They look so large. They look delicious. And look at, I made one, two, three, four, I made six, seven, eight. I made eight. Some of them are a little bigger than others because I didn't have the scoop to measure them. Um, I'm going to put them back in the oven for just like another minute or two. Um, I mentioned that if you were being extra decadent, you could definitely follow the recipe and drizzle a little bit of chocolate. You would just melt the chocolate, just like I did for the cake, on the double boiler. And you would add a little bit of uh, probably plant-based milk to make it a little runnier. And then you would just drizzle it over the top. But this is everything. Um, the cookies, I'm um, just going to leave for one more minute. And then we've done our dessert show. And um, I hope everyone remembers not to eat everything all at once, right? Still dessert, still has calories, but it's so delicious, right, Wendy? I mean, I've tasted your desserts. They're delicious beyond the beyond. Um, <laughs> you have many people wanting to move to Taos and become your oh. neighbors. I will well, people are welcome to come neighbor. visit me. People are welcome to come visit me. We've just had, we're having snow, quite a bit of snow. Uh, Wendy, I didn't tell you, but three feet the, in one day in the mountains the other day, Wednesday, three feet. So we're ski country here, and um, I'm not a skier at all, but um, it's good to see the snow. Um, my dog is a snow dog, and um, she loves the snow. I think these are absolutely done now for me to take them out. Great. I'm just going to have them here so you see them. Um, and I have the beautiful, beautiful cake, um, which we cut really faster than ever. And... Isla says, I want to see those desserts. She says, Carol, I want to see beautiful. those desserts. Beautiful. We're going to sign off because we're past time. But yes. I just want to say to the people who want to um, be your neighbor, being Carol's neighbor comes with um, doing the dishes. So, <laughs> um, you know, on all these cooking shows, she's there having to do all the dishes on her own. Yes. But, thank um, you, Wendy, for the premise. Well worth it. So yes. we'll sign off for now. Um, goodbye. Thanks, Carol. Thanks for the Thank you. recipe. And we'll see you March 19th.
right, Wendy? I will Our see next, you. next demo is March 19th. So all right, see you on. all then. Thank you. Have a good holiday tomorrow. And remember, love is all year round. Right. <laughs> so as a sign off, yes, next demo, March 19th. You're right, Carol. And you can reach Carol at theveggievanguard.com. Um, also on Instagram, follow her at the Veggie Vanguard. And then of course, please follow Plant Powered Metro New York as well. And for anybody who would like, these programs are free, but if you'd like to make a donation, we can always use the donation for all the other programs we do. And we'd so, be happy about that because we do a lot of hard work to bring you this programming and donations are very much welcomed. We're a volunteer community and, um, we're growing all the time. And although I'm not there personally, I'm still there with my own heart and, and happy to be involved. And see you next time. We'll see you next time. Bye, okay, everyone. Say bye. Say Thank bye. you. Thank you. <laughs> say bye. Say bye. Bye. bye.